Evening, folks. Chief and I here heading out to check uh, on the cows. They're on the in the east pasture, so our property's kind of divided by this um, easement road. A few families live down, so it's just a single lane gravel road. But um, we're gonna head over here and uh, check on the cows. Should be having calves um, pretty soon. Uh, pretty much any time from now till fall. So I run an open herd, so it's it's hard for me to pin down exactly when we'll have calves. But um, anyway, it keeps it uh, <laughs> keeps it fun. Let me get out and open this gate here. I see a calf. That must be Dolly. We were out here yesterday checking on things. It looks like she just had a calf, actually. Eh, no. Hey, baby. Let's check this out. No, nope, a couple days probably, I would guess, but they hide their calves so dang well. I'm gonna get out and throw down these pellets. Get on, Judge. Let's just shut her off right here. Well, we're trying out a new mic, so I have a mic on. Hopefully it'll pick up all right from over here. I don't want to spook that little calf there. I know, mama's over here. I'd say a day, probably two, two days old. We tried filming this video last night and it was just, the cows wouldn't cooperate. I didn't have any pellets. I don't really feed, feed cubes or any feed ever. Uh, they're just on grass, but I usually keep cubes on hand to make them cooperate when I need them to go in the pens or if I need to move them pastures or whatever. That's how we do it. Pretty much the only other time we'll feed any pellets is in the winter if it's gonna be you know 20 degrees or less. If it's gonna be real cold at night. I'll do that just to keep their stomachs warm and but so this is uh this is our longhorns we went from 22 cows last spring to i think six right now is all we have four uh well uh this this young heifer here three mama cows and a bull and one steer that's getting butchered here in a few months and the calf is now heading off she i think gonna be lost here dang it uh but uh we had such a bad drought couldn't find hay and what hay we found was just insanely expensive saw the writing on the wall and uh sold a bunch of cows and butchered some that were probably really underweight but it was just the best option for us at the time with the low maintenance a few things to touch on uh their longhorns are more uh, disease resistant um, to diseases as well as worms. Uh, all right, mama. Um, they, they require a lesser quality grass or hay. Uh, they're, they're less picky. I wouldn't say they're quite like a goat or a sheep, but they're less picky than most cows. Uh, they, the, they have a low birth rate uh, which it basically makes them calve easy. They, they just have a very easy time calving and no assistance at all. In 10 years, I've never had to assist with a calf uh, and I've never lost a calf. Um, 
they thrive in this southern region. They'll thrive in any, in any environment, but they, you know, they do really well in the south. Uh, hot and dry, that's kind of their thing. Uh, they have a strong maternal nature. And I, you know, you could probably say, well, all cows have that, and, and that may be true. Yes, they do. Uh, the, the advantage of these is they have the ability with their horns to defend the herd and their calves against, um, you know, whether it be coyotes or, or bobcat or, or uh, um, just any kind of predator. Um, the longhorns have at least twice the longevity of other breeds of cattle. So a longhorn cow will easily live 20 years if, if well cared for or, or longer. Uh, and they'll also calve that long. So, you know, that's one, that's one thing I like about it. Um, the, the, unique, the uniqueness of them is something that we really enjoy. Clearly the hides are all different. The horns are all different. We just, we really enjoy that. It's not why we raise them particularly, but it does give a little bit of character and does make it fun. Um, then they have deep, rich history here in, in America. Um, not only with the, the, you know, the settling of the country, but with um, post-Civil War. That's, those, this is, I mean, the, the proteins across the nation, this is where it came from. And I just like the history of it. Um, Got to kind of watch her here. I know, it's good, huh? Uh, um, so my experience with, with these cows, like a steer or heifer on grass only, uh, it takes about three years to get them to mature weight for butcher. And what I call mature weight uh, is about a thousand pounds live weight. <clears throat> and then they dress out at 550, between 550 and 600. Um, they, so clearly you're gonna get less meat. Um, they're just, they're, their body shape and composition isn't like a commercial breed of cattle. Um, so, you know, that's one downfall. Uh, I, I, fi I think it's worth it. I think the taste profile from the beef is, um, I think it's better than commercial beef personally. And I think it's because the taste is coming more from the, uh, the, the muscle rather than the fat that's marbled in it. Um, and, and I'm not opposed to fat or commercial beef at all. Don't get me wrong. I think I think animal fat is an essential part of our diet. I think it's been demonized, and I think we absolutely need it. Uh, but um, for, for our purposes, this is what's worked well. Uh, you, can brown, you can brown ground beef, and there's, by the time it's ready and cooked, it's virtually no grease in the pan. Uh, it's just, it's just, for what we like, the taste, um, it's just perfect for, for what, and like I said, we've been doing this 10 years. I haven't bought beef in 10 years and I wouldn't change it for the world. We will have beef every now and again at a, at a restaurant or a friend's farm or whatnot. And uh, it's nice to change things up, but this is, this is wonderful in our opinion. So um, I'll just, we don't, we don't name our, like our, beef steers or, or um, anything we're going to eventually sell for either breeding stock or, uh, you know, for beef. I mean, what's the point? Um, but we do name our bull, this speckled one and brindle slash speckled one back here in the back. Uh, his name is Judge and his registered name is Judge and Jury and we call him Judge. And he, he's, he's pretty gentle. I, I don't like turning my back on him, but he is a pretty gentle bull. Um, he definitely, you know, uh, is cautious and, and defends his, the other, the other cows. But um, as long as you respect him, I've had, I haven't had a whole lot of problems out of him. Uh, 
this guy right here, this black and white steer here, he's about three years old and he's probably about a thousand pounds live weight. It's maybe hard to see. I know it's maybe hard to see in the camera, but he's about a thousand pounds and uh, he is getting butchered uh, here in a few months and uh, we'll be selling probably a side of him and then we'll keep a side. That's typically how we do it. It helps pay for our processing. We're not trying to make a living doing this. Whoa, nah, you get back. We're not trying to make a living doing this. This is just the lifestyle we live and what we do sell helps pay for our share or, or, or half of it. Uh, let's see, this gal here is a, is a young heifer. She, um, she has not had a calf, obviously she's a heifer, um, but I think with Judge and her, they're gonna make one pretty calf. Her name is Choo Choo. Bought her from a friend of mine whose property backs up to a railroad track. And when they found her, uh, she was laying on the fence line near a, near a railroad track. So they, they named her Choo Choo and I've just carried that over. Uh, it's a unique story. Um, Dolly here, she's the one that has the calf that hopefully didn't go too far. Uh, but this is Dolly. Um, she was the first cow that I ever bought. And um, she has just, she's an excellent mother, very, very uh, protective and dependable. Um, has calf every year, great mother. Um, this is Eve. She was born on Christmas Eve. I don't remember which year, but she was born on Christmas Eve, hence the name Eve. Um, she was not born on our farm, but uh, bought from the same friend who we bought uh, uh, Dolly from. And then, let's see. This is Miss Kitty over here. We'll go this way. This is actually Choo Choo's mother, Miss Kitty. So that's our small herd. Uh, I wish it was still 20 or more total animals, but it's not, and that's just the way life goes. We'll build back up eventually. Hopefully the drought, we snap out of this drought and uh, things start looking up for us. Um, so, um, We've been having camera issues because it's so dang hot and the cameras keep shutting down because of the heat. So I'm gonna wrap this up. We're actually on a different, we're on a phone camera now. So I'm gonna wrap this up. Appreciate you watching. Uh, if you have any questions or comments about the cows, put them in the comments. Uh, really, really appreciate everybody being here. Um, and I, I especially wanna say thank you to Fowler Family Farm. I've been friends with Mike for 20 years and uh, his channel, Fowler Family Farm, he has been mentioning me in, in, his, in his videos. Uh, we've done a couple collaboration videos and it has helped grow our audience. Um, I bet, I bet half, half of our, I bet half of our audience or mo probably more has come from him. So I appreciate that so much and I appreciate all of you that have taken his recommendation and suggestion and come check this out and subscribe. And if if um, if you like what you're seeing and and you want to see more, let us know. And uh, we'll definitely keep the videos coming. So we'll see you on the next one.